Hey guys, it's Mr. Jack and Triple Zero here, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Inspira Impressive Rex Steve. This car is a knockoff to the real life third gen Subaru Impreza WRX STI. With the styling mix between the pre facelift and facelift models of the Impreza, this car retains the famous STI wing, rims, and badging to give it that STI look except for the roof spoiler and rear diffuser. The body of the car is made by a modder named Burisu in his 05 Rally Hero mod file. The link is down in the description if you want to download it. It has a lap time of 1 minute, 25 seconds, 17 milliseconds at the quote unquote Top Gear test track, and 2 minutes, 20 seconds, 50 milliseconds at the automation track. A top speed of 167 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 6.18 seconds. This vehicle uses a 2.5 liter EJ257 Boxer 4 engine that produces 306.5 horsepower and 269.9 foot-pounds of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 23.5 miles per gallon and weighs 3,442.2 pounds or 1,561.4 kilograms. And for the market, it's a good competitor in the family sports premium car market, and you also consider it as a fun premium car, a muscle car, and a grand tourer. In terms of how I created the impressive, the panel material will be made out of aluminum with a monocoque chassis made out of AHS steel, with a front longitudinal engine placement, the front suspension is a McPherson strut, and the rear suspension is a double wishbone. For the engine, it is a Boxer 6 made out of aluminum with the bore set to 99.5 millimeters and the stroke set to 79 millimeters, which makes it a 2,457 cubic centimeter engine with a dual overhead cam 4 valve header made out of aluminum. The crank is made out of forged steel with the con rods and pistons made out of lightweight forged. The compression is set to the European spec of 8.7 to 1 ratio with the cam profile set to 67 using VVT at all cams which is the, what the active valve train system, whatever Subaru calls it. The turbocharger, it's not their IHI VF52 turbo because there is no, like hardly any information online of the actual specs of that turbo. So I just made a custom turbo that kind of represents its real life performance based on power torque and horsepower. The compressor is at 45 millimeters to 49.5 millimeter turbine. The AR ratio is set to 0.86 with the maximum boost at 13.3 which is the max boost that the VF52 can hold. For the fuel system it's a multi-point fuel injector with a single configuration with a performance intake running on premium fuel with the fuel mixture set to 13.4, the ignition timing at 61 and the RPM limit set to 6700 RPM. For the exhaust we got some short cast tires with dual exhaust with bypass valves with the exhaust diameter set to 2.25 inches or 57.1 millimeters with a high flow three-way catalytic converter with the first valve for a reverse flow and the second one at none. For the drive type it is a longitudinal all-wheel drive with a manual six speed with a top speed set at 167 miles per hour with an electric LSD and the power distribution is 41% in the front and 59% in the rear. For the tires, they are Radio Sports Compound tires with an even 245 millimeters in the front and back running on 18 inch alloy rims. For the brakes, it's a 300 millimeter three piston vented disc in the front and a 250 millimeter one piston vented disc in the back. For the downforce, it's a fully clad under tray with the brake airflow set to 50. It's got a sport interior with a premium sat nav with variable hydraulic power steering with electronic stability control and standard safety standards. And for suspension, it's got active sport springs with a semi-active dampers and the only option is passive sway bars with a sport preset. Despite the one and only problem, which is the narrow clearance in the engine, we're going to export this to BMG Drive and test it out. So here we are at the modded map of Los Angeles, which took me a good five minutes to load this map up. And look at this car. This looks pretty clean, to be honest. I mean, while the taillights are not spot on because there's no taillight at the moment that does match to buy the vehicle, especially for a Super Impreza from the mid 2000s and early 2010s, there's no taillight at the moment that supports this body style. Or if you're trying to make a Super Impreza replica, I mean, it pretty looks clean all around except for the front because the front I widened it out because the tires were originally 215 millimeters and I just put 30 millimeters extra just to get a symmetrical 245s front and back. So here we are at the highway portion of the map. We're going to be doing a basic performance test, like the first one will be a 0 to 62 test, second a 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly a top speed run if possible on this map. 
So first things first, we'll do an acceleration test starting now. I'll do this one by just hitting the gas. And... 0 to 62 in 6.37 seconds. Get ready for a brake test. Now. See, I'll do one with the launch, well, without the launch and with the launch. So 62 to 0 of 2.41 seconds of 104.01 feet. That ain't that bad. How about the one with the launch of a 0 to 60? So 0 to 60 launch, now. Use a real, use a realistic gearbox. I can manually switch gears and everything, and that was kind of an early shift. 6.15 seconds. That's an improvement by two tenths of a second. So in terms of top speed, we're all, we're going over 140 miles per hour for quite some time. And it sucks we're going uphill. We're now losing speed. I don't know if it is possible to reach 167 on this map or reaching it in general. But the torque curve of having a slightly improper uh, turbo tuning due to the lack of information online about that type of turbocharger, that VF52. Like, if there was such information online, it would have been nice. Like, there's information on Garrett turbochargers. Like, I seen a post on Reddit. Like, they got information on a, uh, I don't know if it's a Garrett GT28 or something like that, where it's got the exducer size, the turbine size, AR ratio, and max boost. And it's got all that information, you can put that on the automation and try to get a result with that in BMG. And now we're at a downhill. Okay, this is great. So I think we may get a top speed going here. And it looks like we will reach beyond its top speed. 170. 170 is the top speed. What about we crash here into this little bridge pillar? Going a little bit off center, but who even cares? So let's get a camera going right now. 169. Watch the FOV and smash. Okay, no hazards right now. Here we go. I got the hazards kicked in because impact detected stopping car. Major front end damage. Do eight times. Oh boy, this thing is flattened out already. Let's uh, full time it because it's really... Nothing and the engine is surprisingly still running. Front wheels are dead. That wheel is still spinning. Let's stop it right now. Thanks. And can we drive? I doubt it. Even spamming the clutch doesn't even... Well, spamming the clutch does that. Well, it's not going anywhere, fortunately, and it's stalled out, so whatever. So we got the basic performance test out of the way. Now we're gonna be taking this to the racetrack of Hirochi Race Week with the long race circuit with the Rex Steve. And I'm gonna be taking you over there right now. So here we are at the Hirochi Raceway. We're gonna be doing two laps with this car and see how this thing drives. So let's get things started here in three. Two, one, start. So you know the game so much, you know, like when to start counting down and when to say start. So, not that bad. Handle's not that bad. 1.2 G's of steering, it seems like. Yeah, 1.1 right there. If 80 miles per hour. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This thing is actually not that bad. <laughs> It's kind of like one of my old vehicles, what, the, the, the Spower, the Spower DME, which was one of my early automation of BMG vehicles, which that was a racing riding mower, and that lawnmower had like a 267 horsepower engine, and that thing glued onto the track like really, really well, to be honest with you. Like, this is not that bad. But if you want to race between like the Spower and this one, I don't, I don't even know. I think I might as well just do that after this race. And some of that minor understeer, because we're kind of going a little bit too hot. I mean, this car is clean, not going to lie. Just by looking at it, performance-wise, handling, yeah. Like if it had the actual 0 to 60 time and acceleration and everything else, this would have been a very clean automation BMG car that I would make that, that I've made, but unfortunately that's not really the case. And usually that corner I always overshoot and go like do corner cutting, like one of my other videos racing on this track. Like I always cut there, and I see some green at the other side here, so we're gonna be going wow to our second lap. So first lap, one minute forty-five seconds, eight hundred fifty-six milliseconds. Kind of hug the curb. Going over 70, almost 80 miles an hour is hugging that curb. Watch the cone. I don't want to hit the cone. Because if you hit the cone, you might as well revoke your race driver's license, which I don't think there's a license for it. I like Gran Turismo, yes. Real life, I don't know. I doubt it. It's just skill in general. And if you have no skill, just get yourself signed up for a uh, racing contract and call your racing career to be over. And our split time, almost a 
borderline five second difference between first and second lap because the first lap it's going from a start and this one we're already on a hot lap right now i mean i know i said it before but i gotta hand it to you i mean this car is clean from just looking at the rear view right now watch that corner hard the brakes so split time almost a six second differential how about here Ooh, not really the same i mean that lag though of the game i've been getting it somewhat recently just flat out just hard hardcore don't do it lagging on this game it was pretty inconsistent like if the game just flat out freeze on you for like 20 seconds and back to normal like nothing has happened so finish time in one minute 39 seconds 245 milliseconds that's that's great so a total time of three minutes 25 seconds 101 milliseconds that's nice to be honest 325 101 I might as well bring out the spower if it does work. If the spower don't work, then oof, because I posted that on the BMG repository. I got that, the JMS, the JMPS mail truck, and the Ozone ADFE. Like I got those videos posted on. What the hell was that noise from hitting the cone? And the cone is underneath the Subi. And I'm gonna say the Subi, but the Inspi impact detected stopping car. Turn off slow-mo because it's not where it worked because I thought we were going face first to the wall, but it wasn't the case. I was just staring at this damn cone. It just swallowed the cone whole, like looking... Let's do free cam. Look inside of it. Uh, come on, look inside. Yep, it's in the Boxer 4 engine. It just... Pfft, it didn't even digest the cone just yet. And there's the cone after the car respawned. You know what? I'm going to bring out the spower if it does work. Same thing, two laps. The spower DME right here. Select vehicle. Hopefully it works. If it don't, then oof. So the spower is here. And last time I built this was in 2018. 267 horsepower motor. Like, what type of motor is it? Can I go? Yeah, I can do free cam. Is it front or rear longitudinal? Uh, maybe... It's somewhere around here. I think it's an inline six engine by just looking at it. I mean, it's pretty hard to make out, but it might be an I six. So same rules, two laps to beat the time of three minutes, 25 seconds, 101 milliseconds. Hopefully we can beat it. If not, then the Inspira will forever be king. So we'll get things started here in three, two, one, start. And this thing revs up to 8,500 RPM. Oh my god. And damn, this thing is scraping, but it's gluing to the track well, to be honest. And wow, these brakes are very active. I mean, this sounds somewhat higher than 2JZ. Boost is up to 37.6 PSI. What was I thinking back then? Oh my god. Brakes work well. Kind of got some of that fading over a thousand degrees. But we're at a stable 500, but we got ECS. Got some of that jiggle in there. Like the early automation to uh, Beam and G, damn exported vehicles. Like there was some like handling inconsistencies, and also when you turn off the engine, it just fades out. It's like you're revving, it doesn't like shut off immediately. It kind of like fades out, like it slowly drops its RPM and then down to zero. And once you start it up, it slowly builds up and then comes back to its resting RPM of like whatever a thousand nine eight seven hundred RPM, depending on your cam profile and everything. It's not that bad. To be honest. And major brake fade in the front. Wow. Yeah, I can see the temperatures climbed over 900 degrees. We're at 780 and dropping. I mean, it all depends on the braking between manual braking and that was close. Manual braking and the ECS. I mean, that would have been a career ender if I did flip it over. So minor understeering through the corner. And we are auto steering. No, I thought we were. 1 minute, 45 seconds, 796 milliseconds. So about the same time compared to the Inspra, the, the Rex Steve. I think the Rex Steve was a 500. Like, the, in terms of milliseconds, it was a 500. And we got almost an 800. So it was off by roughly 300, like 250 to 300 milliseconds. And first split time, over 4 second gap between first and second lap. These checkpoints, it all will change after the brake fade stops and it's not we're not gonna make it god damn it i almost thought about restarting just to get a time well two second difference we're definitely not gonna make it you know i'm sorry 
restart it. I mean, I want a healthy run, not just a, a screw up that will prove the second lap just useless, just kill the run. So, I'm gonna come back after the first lap where I screwed up, and that's what we'll be continuing the video off. So, pretty much back where I left off, major front brake fade. The first lap time I got was 1 minute, 42 seconds, 262 milliseconds, and split time from that checkpoint right there is roughly 4 seconds, so... I think we are definitely on par of beating the Rex Steve. If I had a clean run in the first attempt, this would probably be as close to beating the Rex Steve, if not like a little bit better or worse, depending on my driving style. I got a better split time right there. How about here? So let's break a little bit early because we got brake fade. I don't know what the brake airflow was on this vehicle. Was it like in the 20s or something? Like nowadays, I'm putting like around 40 or 50. And not only that, the brake size was limited with this vehicle. Like, it had like 160, 170 millimeter brake pads and one. All right, deep, deep into the sand. And we are stuck. Nice. F nice. So coming up to the corner that I screwed up earlier. First lap time is 1 minute 42 seconds, 4 milliseconds. And there we go, there we go. Split time, 4 seconds roughly. Cone, Cone, Joan. Final lap time we get, well, we'll be definitely in a split time of 1 minute, 39 seconds, 555 milliseconds, and that was a horrible ending to that race. So we beat the Rex Steve by, looks like, 4 seconds, 3 and a half seconds, if I'm thinking that right, based on my math. So 3 minutes, 21 seconds, 559 milliseconds is our total time of racing both laps, so... I think the Spower will remain king. I mean, it was kind of flawed. Wrecking out of the first and second attempt. Third attempt. Turns out third time was the charm. But let's formally end the Spower off yet again by going off-road and into a wall. Let's do the camera as is. Eight times. Get a good angle, like right here. Damn, it just got lifted off the ground, son. So reset the camera. Two times, maybe. Eh, uh, full time. We're upside down. Was upside down, and... Wow, that lawnmower is pretty strong. Up on our wheels, all of our wheels? Yes, we are. And like I'm talking about with turning the engine off, if you turn the engine off, it'll be off right now. Zero RPM, but it just drops down its RPMs. See, 1,000... And... Zero. You start it up. It slowly builds up, not just boom like that. So last but not least, we'll drop this thing off to leap of death and see how this guy will hold up. So here we go with the wannabe Subi Rumble, and let's drive us off the cliff. If this would have had better shift times and everything, and 62, so if this had like better shift times, I'd just like burp, burp. Which that's usually kind of like average for manual transmissions. If you're not like, uh, sorry, power shifting, but shifting a little bit faster, this would have been like a good five and a half second time vehicle, not your six second vehicle. And let's get a camera right now. Here we go. So if this would have been like a better, like acceleration shift time and everything, this would have been not like almost like the perfect, like borderline replica of a Subaru Impreza WRX STI. And that thing got hell flattened. Front suspension doesn't know what to do. So full time. And we are not going to reach the... I think we are. Okay, engine is off, right? Yes, it is, because that was a brutal front impact. Like, if an impact like that brutal doesn't kill the engine, but, like, what else can you kill it with? And, damn, this is an interesting way to bring this down the cliff. We were, like, spinning in place. Now we're flat spinning almost. No, now we're spinning in different directions. And hit. Damn, that was a brutal rear end crash. I mean, if we want to stop right there, then I don't know what to say, and we're going to splash. Yes, we are. So, splash. Engine is hydrolocking. We don't want that. Well, pretty much want that to happen. The engine's already dead. And is the camera going to screw us this time? Because I had this on uh, regular camera, like the like the ocean, the water didn't even exist. If you went to free cam like this, then you'd see the water, which that was a pretty weird glitch that I experienced in one of my last videos. I don't know if it was the, the Dahatsu Midget, like the T-Type or something else, but we'll take this to Flatland and see what it looks like. And looking at it, the back end held up somewhat well. Front end, it's a whole, whole different story. Front end doesn't look like a Subi. Or a Rex Steve. 
Whatever you can call it. I mean, sides are all right. Rear end also all right, but the front end didn't survive. So next I'm gonna drive this down the crater as soon as I respawn it in an awkward fashion. Like drive this down the crater, then I'll freeze physics like this and then go to the free cam and spawn at the peaks of the mountain and get a crash going and see if he land in the crater here. If not, then oh well. So here we are at one of the peaks of the mountain, like I said earlier. I drove the vehicle around 92 miles per hour, just looking at the airspeed, not the rigor speedometer. That just, that's just, just the vehicle's speed and wheel spin. So I drove around 92 miles an hour before I was about to go airborne. And let's see what the crash is like just launching off of this mountain peak right now. Holy crap, we got a lot of ground from right here to down here. We're going to crash at like whatever, two, f uh, did we just break the sound barrier? 270, let's say 77, yeah, 77. Camera, uh, I should have reacted like a lot earlier. So camera in three, two, one, resume. So I should have reacted earlier, but... At least I gave you a countdown, and at least I reacted to it, so track it a little. And that left side is definitely mangled, like almost shredded right off. So regular cam, is eight times, anything interesting here? If not, uh, full time, and four time. There goes the wheel, full time. Bring back the UI, and main engine broken like always. Hazards kicked in because impact detected stopping car, and this may be an interesting back to freaking. Okay. That side again hit. I would say we broke the sound barrier once again. I was like, with the, with the, with the wind whooshing sound effect. Two times, anything interesting? Pretty interesting, but the tranny going, whoop, 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 same thing with the engine, and tire deflated out of nowhere. What is this, a freaking a nunchuck? What the hell is the transmission and the engine doing? It's it that thing is definitely the world's biggest nunchuck. I swear to God. And this vehicle, uh, uh, hide the UI, let the dust clear out. And this thing, got a tire going and another one. That tire, long gone. This tire, oh, this thing's really cruising. This thing, this tire's healthy. Yeah, that tire's healthy compared to this guy. This tire's shredded and bent up. This guy, he's rolling. I mean, looking at it, the tread looks clean enough, and it doesn't have, like, any, like, rips or shreds, and it's just gonna do a 180 on us. Wow. <laughs> well, let's let that tire do its tire business. Let's just get in the background, like, right here. So, right side, it got bent up, but it's not, like, I want to say unscathed, but it got bent up. Left side, front end, rear end, unrecognizable. Shredded to shreds. That's all I can say. And the dashboard... Yo, that's the steering wheel and dashboard. This thing got misplaced. Wow. The engine misplaced. What's the interior like? Yep. Interior, everyone would have died. Everyone would have been dead in this car. Enough said. So that'll do it with automation and BeamNG Drive with the Inspira Impressive Rex Steve. I gotta hand it to you with this car. This car looks clean by just looking at it. Well, it's got the STI looks from mainly the wing, the knockoff badging, taillights, rims, and the eeny teeny tiny Steve right here, the wannabe STI look. It's kind of funny, instead of just putting STI, it's this S-T-E-V backwards E, kind of like Eminem, how he styles his name in his albums. Even though it has a slightly less, I uh, say quote-unquote, powerful version of the EJ25 engine, this is due... One, because of a lack of information I could find online about the VF52 Turbo. If this would have had a VF52 Turbo, it would have performed a little bit better than what it is right now. If it would have had it, then this would have been a great 5 second car, because in real life, the 0-60 to 60 is like 4.7 seconds, and we got like around 6, like with and without launching the Rex Steve. Well, there's always room for improvement in terms of performance, styling... I'm just going to leave it as is. I mean, the rear diffuser and wing helped out in downforce, which kind of made a factor with the cornering and everything, including the suspension tuning and me gaining personal knowledge on how a vehicle should drive, even if it is a performance version of a regular production vehicle. So this has been Mr. Jack and Triple Zero. I'll see you in the next video.